Good morning, my dear students, and happy Thursday. Wow, it's almost the end of the week, and we've done a lot of tasks already. I'm so proud of all of you. You guys are so great. So, for today's lesson, it's going to be under our unit of inquiry about where we are in place and time, with our central idea, as you all know, Home is a basic need for all people. You've already learned a lot of things about maps, different kinds of maps, different parts of the house. You even write a book about different houses in the world. So for today's goals, we're going to read another book, which is about Homes Around the World by Max Moore. So it's somehow kind of similar to the one we read last Wednesday, which was At Home Around the World by Lucy Floyd. Well, this one is just Homes Around the World by Max Moore. So they're similar. They're both information books, but there are different books. This is another book to know more about different homes around the world. And then, we're going to use our research skills to make a PowerPoint. So PPT stands for PowerPoint Presentation, or a scrapbook about different homes. So you have two choices on how you're going to make your project. Oh, it's going to be our project time. So you can either make a PowerPoint, a PPT, or a scrapbook if you don't want to use your computer but you will surely have to use your research skills. All right, so what's this kind of map again? Right, it's the world map and our world is so big and huge. You can also see the same kind of illustration in a globe. Now, because our world is so big, that's one reason why we have different kinds of homes, different, different kinds of houses. Maybe this place here, they need a different kind of home from those places around this area. That's the reason why we have different books about homes around the world, because there's not just one kind of home. There are so many different kinds, and you guys already know about that. And today we're going to read this book. Oh, now, this is the book that we already read, which was At Home Around the World by Lucy Floyd. And I believe you guys already all love it. I've seen your homework and you guys were able to choose which home you really like. And it was really nice of you to make your good choices and even give reasons why. Now, for today's lesson, we're going to read another book about homes in different parts of the world. Of course, those homes, because they're from different parts of the world, they're different from each other. So as what I've said, it's somehow similar to the previous book. We're going to read this book. The title is Homes Around the World by Max Moore. So the author is Max Moore. Can you see an illustrator on this book cover? No, nope, there's no illustrator. Because are you using a picture or a drawing? Right, they're using real photos. So there's no need to have an illustrator. So most likely, if there's no photographer written here, maybe Max Moore is also the photographer. Okay, now let's start reading this book, okay? It's going to be in this other file right here, and we're going to open it up. Okay. So, let's start by the book cover. And the title is, Homes Around the World by Max Moore. Right. 
so you guys can read with me, okay? And don't worry, I will send you this file, and you can also read it yourself. If you think, oh, Miss Danica is too fast, so you guys will have a chance to read it yourself. Most of us live in houses or flats. So, this place on the picture, is it in a farm, in a town, or in a city? You're right, it's in a city. So that picture tells us that most of us live in houses or flats, because a lot of us will live in cities, right? They are usually made of bricks or concrete. Bricks or concrete. So these are bricks. And this part right here is called concrete. The same material you use in roads. We call them concrete road. Or these are concrete houses or brick houses. But not all homes in the world are like this. Some people live in unusual homes. Unusual, it means not common. We don't always see homes like that, especially in a city. It's called unusual. If something is not very usual or not very common or not normal in our everyday lives, we usually call them unusual. Some people live in unusual homes. For example, like this one, look at this. Would you like to live high above the ground? Some people in forests and jungles build three, three houses. <gasps> they use bamboo, vines, and wood from the forest to make their homes. So this kind of house is called tree house. And look at that, it's so high above the ground. And because they're usually in forests and jungles, they can easily use those trees to make the tree house on the tree house. And they use a huge, a very long ladder up here. Why do you think they built this kind of house? Why do they build this kind of house? Why can't they build their house on the ground? It's easier. They don't have to climb up. Why do they have to build their house on the tree? I wonder. This is a tree house. It's so high. So think about it, okay? Why do they why do you think they built their houses on the trees? Why do they put it so high? Why not here? It's easier, right? Now let's move on to the next one. Suppose you went outside, dug up some clay, and then built a house with it. People in very hot places can do this. You know your Play-Doh, or like your clay that you use in art class? Some people use that to make houses in some very hot places. Hmm, I wonder why can't we do this in cold places? Do you wonder? These are called clay houses. It's made of clay. So clay is like a very soft kind of soil, which has water in it and very sticky. You usually use it to make different kinds of art crafts or vase, but in some places, especially hot places, they use it as a house. Why hot places? Can you think about it? Why don't they do it in cold places too? Hmm, I wonder. There it is. The sun dries the clay into strong adobe bricks. These are bricks. So because in hot places, it's very hot. And the sun, it dries it up. It dries up the clay. And when it's all dried up, for example, you have a piece of clay in your hand and then you make something, you put it under the sun, is it going to get soft or going to get hard? Yes, it's going to get hard just like these clays and it's called adobe, adobe bricks. 
Wow, what do you think happens if it rains and if there's no sun? Hmm. These cone-shaped mud brick, oh, these cone-shaped mud brick homes are called beehive houses. Beehive houses. It's cone-shaped. You know the word cone, right? It's like the ice cream cone shape, and it's also made of mud or like a similar kind of structure with clay, and they are called beehive houses. Their tall cone-shaped roofs help to keep them cool inside. Why do you think it is called a beehive? What lives in a beehive and what does a beehive look like? Just like that, right? And why did they make it like cone shape? Why does it have to be like that? Why can't it be like a box? Why? You're right. It helped to keep them cool inside. If the roof is so high up like that, when you go inside, it's not going to be that hot anymore. And usually you have this kind of houses, again, in cold places or hot places. Hot places. Right here. All the hot air rises to the top of the house. So, because it's so hot in this place, the hot air doesn't have to stay here where the people are. Where the people are, the hot air will go high up and you're going to feel cool. Next one. What would, it what would it be like to live on a lake? Some people build their homes on floating islands made of reeds. These are reeds. From long, long grass, and they dried it up, they weave it, and they use it as a house or as a home, and they actually make them float it in the water or on a lake. Why do you think they do that? Do you wonder? Why do they make floating homes? Or they actually call it floating islands. So this is their floating island. It's not on the soil it's not on the ground it's on the lake it's floating and then they build their houses there why do they do that hmm can you think about it why do they have floating islands you think isn't it cool what how did they do it so let's look how they do this one they add a layer of fresh reeds every few months. So here is the fresh reeds, those very long kind of grass. They dry them. Oh, actually, it's like still fresh. And then they weave it. They dry it a little bit. They weave it. And then they put it in a floating home. And they also make it into their house. And they always add every few months. Why can't they just use it for one whole year? And why do they keep adding? Why do they have to keep changing some part of it and adding some few fresh reeds every few months? Hmm. I'd like to answer that, but I'd also like you to answer that question yourself. Right? It's much better if you think about why do they keep adding every few months? Hmm. That's your task. Now, some fishermen build wooden houses on stilts over the water. People walk along walkways to get to shops, work, and school. Look at these houses. Are they on the ground or on the water or above the water? It's not really on. Yes, you're right. It's above the water. They're not in the water. They're not on the water, but they're above the water. And they use stilts. These are stilts. Stilts. Can you say stilt? And these are walkways. So in their neighborhood, they also make them little bridges, like a bridge to connect this house to this house. Maybe they, this is their school or somewhere, somewhere right here, but they also have those little bridges to go to school. That's why the 
People there, they walk along walkways or those small bridges to get to shops, work, and school. Wow, that is so cool. Why do you think they build houses on water? Hmm. And who lives in those kind of stilts, stilt houses? Fishermen. And they use wood to do that. That's the walkway. Walkway. Do you think you can ride a car here? No. Oh my god, no you can't. That's why it's called a walkway. Because you can't ride your bike here. You can't drive a car. You can only walk. Why can we why why is it that we can only walk here? Why? Why can't I drive my car? Maybe ride a bicycle. Right, because it's made of wood. And probably it's not too strong for cars. Definitely not too strong for cars or bicycles. But here you can see something. Yes. So maybe this is strong enough for the motorcycle, for the motorbike. Now let's move on to the next kind of house. Houses and stilts are also sometimes built on land. People walk out people walk up a ramp to get into their homes. Cows, pigs, horses, and chickens are kept under their houses. So those stilt houses, these are stilts, I told you that, right? The one that holds the house up high. They're just not built on lands. They're built on, I mean, they're, not, they're just not built on water. They're built on land too. And they use ramp or like some short stairs to go to the house. And what did they put inside under it? Cows, pigs, horses, and chickens. So where do you think can we find these kind of houses? You're right, maybe in farms or in mountains. So they can keep some farm animals. Do you know? Miss Danica lived in this kind of house long, long time ago. 20 years ago, probably. Wait. Yeah. Hmm, maybe even longer than that. So, yeah, maybe around 20 or 20 more years ago, I lived in this kind of house. My family's, my family's house used to have stilts like this. And we used to have some chickens. But we, we put the chickens and our farm animals somewhere separately. Here we actually put a hummock. We have a hummock here that we can rest. Back when I was really, really young, we used to have a hummock here. And then the pigs, we used to have pigs and other farm animals in a different kind of like wooden house. So yeah, I lived in a house with stilts and it was really, really cool. And next one. Oh, it's still about the stilt houses and this is the ramp. Yes, we use this kind of ramp too. So where do you think can we find this kind of houses? In cold places or hot places? In the city or in farms and mountains? Think about it, right? And why do you think people build this kind of house? Why? Now, next move on to the next one. Would you like a house shaped like a boat? This, these wooden houses are called Tonkonans. They are the homes from the Toraja people. It's a Tonkonan by Toraja people. Some houses have many carvings of plants and animals inside. And they're like built like boats. Why do they build it like boats? But they're not really in the water. And they put a lot of decoration or arts things on the walls, some carvings. They carved the wall of different plants and animals. And it's so artistic. Artistic means it's full of art. How about this one? So think about it. Why did they think Tonkonans or those Taraji people make Tonkonan? Or houses that are shaped like boats with many carvings. That sounds interesting. And this house is also built on 
stilts. Have you ever moved to a new house? Some people move several times every year. How about you? How many times have you moved? These people, they move every year. I think this looks familiar for you guys. They can fold up their houses and set them up again somewhere else. <gasps> That's so cool. These houses are these houses are covered with animal skins. <gasps> so these are their houses and they can actually fold them and then cover them with some animal skin dried up ones. Maybe not all the time they cover it with animal skins, but mostly. And this is called a yurt. Do you know where you can find this kind of house? I think you all know about it. It's a yurt. Next one. Straw tents can be moved too. Straw is a light material, but it is also strong and warm and doesn't let water in. So this is called a straw. And then it's made of dried leaves or dried grass, dried hay. And you weave them together to make something like this that you use to build the house or the tent. And where do you think can we find these kind of houses? Where? Which city or which is it going to be in hot places or cold places? And why do you think they do that? Why do they build these kind of houses? Straw can also be used to make the walls of homes that don't move. So sometimes they use it for those homes that move, but sometimes they also use it for those homes that don't move. Great. Back when I was young, we didn't use straw, but we used coconut leaves. We weave them and we put them in roofs or walls. Something like this. Suppose you lived in a cold place. Some people used blocks of snow to build igloos, which they lived in during the winter. This is the igloo. It's so cold in igloo. These igloos kept out the wind and were warm inside. So inside the igloo is actually warm, warmer than outside. And it kept out the wind, the very cold wind. Where can we find igloos? Do we have igloos in China? Definitely not in the Philippines. Nuh -uh. Now let's move on to the next one. In hot places, some people live in houses carved into rocks. <gasps> These homes are warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Look at these houses. These are like really, really big rocks and they carved inside to make houses. So you can find these houses in places with winter and with summer. Because in winter, they keep it, the houses keep the people warm. And in summer, it keeps people cool too. Look what's inside of it. It looks so cool. Which country do you think we can find these rock houses? Now, some people build houses in ways that help the planet. This house is heated only by the sun. These are like really good houses. So those people who love to save the planet, who really cares about our planet, just like us, so they can actually, do, most of them, they want to build a house that looks like this. Help the planet because this kind of houses don't need to use any kind of like electricity or kind of like man-made energy, but it use the sun to make electricity to be heated up just like this. I believe you've already seen this. It's called solar panels. Once you have a solar panel, you can put it in the house and it can generate electricity from the sun. And it's another way to save electricity and help our planet, too. How about this house? This house is made from old shipping containers. These houses use less energy and material than most homes. So once you have, you know, old shipping containers, right? 
Have you ever seen container trucks? So those that people use, those trucks that people use for delivery, they are called container trucks. And those very, very old ones that people can't use anymore, they paint it, they clean it, and they make it into homes like this. Why do they do that? Isn't it cool, this kind of houses? But why do people do that? Why do people use this, build this kind of house, and why do they build this kind of houses too? And then, some people build houses just for fun. Are you this kind of person? Hmm. These homes are made to look like a mound of bubbles and an alien spaceship. So there are a lot of kind of houses like this that people think, Oh, it's fun to make this kind of house. Yeah, so this one, this kind of house is like a spaceship. Alien spaceship, like it's out of the world. If you look at it, in the future, people may, people may build their homes in other unusual ways. This is so unusual. Right, do you like this kind of house? It's like a spaceship. It's like something you can find in another planet. And why do people build this again? The reason is here. For fun. Hmm, which kind of people do you think can build this kind of house? So those are really good. Now, here is our glossary. So, for example, there are some words there that you didn't really know. So, you can actually go back to this page and it tells us what they are. Like, for example, adobe, a material made from dried earth and straw. Beehive house, a cone-shaped mud brick house. Tonkonan, a wooden house shaped like a boat. Treehouse, a house built high up in the trees. Yurt, a round home that can be moved around. Wow, that's the end of our story of our book. It's a very nice information book about different homes in the world. I really love it. I hope you loved it too. So now let's go back to our this other page right here. And what we're going to do is talk about our research project. We're going to have a project. So we already did different projects before, like our recycle bin project. Our That was our trash bin project. Also, we had the, the play, the presentation, which is also our project that time, the tree planting project. This is going to be our research project. You guys have been doing so much research these days because, you know, not, Miss Danica Candle is not there with you to give you, to show you all of those information. And I'm so proud of how you guys have been doing it. With the help of your family, of course. So they're great. Your family is so great for doing that. So for this research project, you're going to use different resources for this and create a PPT or a scrapbook of different homes around the world. So you have a choice. If you want to use PPT, yes, you may use it. Or if you don't want to use computer, you want to cut, you want to print, or you want to draw, you want to write, you can make a scrapbook of different homes around the world. You know a lot of different homes around the world already from those two stories that we talked about. So. Here are the details. Choose at least five different homes. Don't just choose one. It's not a scrapbook. It's not a collection or research. If you're only going to choose one. At least five. Maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But at least five different homes. Okay? Research about each home. Make a PPT or a scrapbook using the information you collected. So what, after you research, you will have information, different pictures, different details, and then you have to put them in a PPT or a scrapbook. Include photos and details about each home. So don't just put words, put photos too. You may print and post it in your scrapbook, or you may copy and paste it in your PPT. Make a cover page for your project with a title, Homes Around the World by, not Max Moore anymore, 
but by your name. But your name is. If I make this project, it's going to be Homes Around the World by Miss Danica. If Joey made this project, it's going to be like Homes Around the World by Joey. Number six. You, so that's a cover page. So that's the first page of your PPT or your scrapbook. Number six. You may use the books at Home Around the World and Homes Around the World as a resource. You may also re research using Baidu or Bing. You may use the internet. You may watch videos to learn more about each home. Lastly, don't forget to make it beautiful. Okay? So you're not going to do this just today because it's a project. This is going to take a long time. Okay? So I'll give you... Hmm, today, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to make this project. Or until Monday. Make it all five days to make this beautiful project about different homes around the world. So you don't have to do, oh my god, that's so many things to do. I can't make a PBT, I can't cut and research at the same time in one day. This is not going to be just one day, guys. It's for five days. You will do this project for five days. I believe some of you can do it in two days. But to make sure you can make it so beautiful and lots of information in it, you can do it until Monday. Okay? You may submit it in Monday on Monday and that's exactly five days to do this research project. And for example, you finish it today. Or tomorrow, if you're really that fast. Just think about, I want you to be a reflective learner. Oh, I finished it in two days. And I still have three more days. What can I do to make my project even better? That's what a reflective learner do. They think about how to make things even better. Especially those things that they do. Alright? So... I hope you guys have a great week and you enjoy doing your project. I know it's going to be a lot for you, but I believe you can all do a great job just like those different tasks you've already done. Bye and enjoy your Thursday. Okay, well, I'm back because I forgot to tell you about what it looks like. An example, it doesn't have to look like this, but these information you may put in your scrapbook or your PowerPoint project, okay? So let me show you. Here's an example. If you're going to make a PPT or a scrapbook, you have to write the title here. Put the title, Homes Around the World, by your name, and then one kind of home in one page. Don't just do like one page and different homes. No, 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 no. No, don't, please don't do something like that, okay? Because if you put all five different homes in one page, maybe your project won't have a lot of information in it. And it's not going to look like a research project anymore. So, in one page, you may put one kind of home. You may put the photo of the home here. The name of the home. Is it a stilt house? Is it a clay house? Is it a teepee? A caravan? It's up to you. So the picture, the name, and maybe this information you can put. What does it look like? What is it made of? Does it look like a car? Does it look like a van? Does it look like a beehive? Is it made of mud? Is it made of straw? And here you may put, why do people live here? Why do they live in tree houses? Why do they live in floating houses? Okay. Some of you already have these answers in your previous year homework about you, about different homes. You guys had pretty good answer. One answer I remember was they build tree houses or those with stilts so that beasts can't go in their homes. That is pretty cool. So you may use that information to prove, but why do people live there? And which countries or places can we see this home? So you know that from our map, there are a lot of different countries and places in the world. 
you can go online, Baidu or Bing, and search where can we find, which, can we, which country can we find a teepee or a caravan? Or do we see them in hot places or cold places? In North Pole? In South Pole? Alright, so those kind of information you may put in your PPT, in your project. So you're going to do that for every kind of home that's in your research project. Alright, I'm done. Bye guys, see you.